Hello and welcome to Philosophy Vibe, the channel where we discuss and debate different philosophical ideas. Today we're going to be looking at the sixth and final meditation by Descartes, entitled Of the Existence of Material Things and of the Real Distinction Between the Soul and the Body of Man. Great. So if you recall, in the last meditation, Descartes has reached a point where he can now start thinking about the existence of a material world. A physical world external to him. Yes. During his state of doubt, Descartes disregarded everything known by the senses and doubted their existence. But he has come a long way since the first meditation, so now it's time to reevaluate the material world to see if there is reason enough to drop the doubt. He agreed in Meditation 5 that material things can exist insofar as they are the subject matter of pure mathematics. So certain elements of material objects such as extension, shape and size are subject to pure mathematics and so there is a possibility these things do exist external to the mind. Interesting. Descartes carries on this line of thought and starts looking at how we as thinking things actually think. He then makes a distinction between the imagination and the understanding. Well, what's the difference? Well, Descartes explains that the understanding deals with pure concepts, whereas the imagination deals with images or representations. What do you mean? Okay, let's take the idea of a triangle. Now, our understanding can create the concept of a three-sided shape in our mind. Our understanding effectively understands the triangle, but our imagination can literally picture the shape of a triangle. It can give us the mental image. I see. But of course, we can see the differences of the two even more when we look to bigger, more complex shapes. Let's take a chilligan, a thousand-sided shape. Now you can understand the concept of a thousand-sided shape without a problem, but try actually picturing this. You can't. Your imagination is limited in this respect. We are unable to form a clear mental image of a chilligan. And even if you try, are you really picturing a thousand sides? Can you tell the difference between that and a 999 sided shape? I see. So the faculty of understanding views things a lot different to the imagination. So Descartes explains that the understanding turns inwards to look upon the contents of the mind and the imagination then turns outwards to the perception of material objects. Because of this, Descartes argues that the imagination is not an essential part of the mind. It concerns itself with the external world, and so it must pick up these images from bodies it has experienced in a material world. At this point, Descartes begins to agree that it may be even more likely that a physical world does exist. So is this his proof? Not yet. He is getting there, but at this point he still does not feel 100% satisfied that this is enough to no longer doubt the existence of a material world. Up until this point, Descartes has doubted all knowledge gained by the senses, including an external world and his corporal body. But now Descartes starts to think about his senses, the ideas he immediately perceives. If a material world exists, then so would his body and the sensations he experiences like pleasure, pain, emotion, hunger, as well as heat, colour, smell and taste would be better explained. So without a physical world, where do these experiences actually come from? These sensations come to us involuntarily. We do not create them in our mind, and yet they are a lot more vivid than any idea we produce solely in the mind. Where then do the sensations come from? without a material world. Well, it could be that God has created these ideas in our minds. The material world does not exist. What we perceive is just the ideas planted by God. Descartes thinks about this, but if God was to create the ideas without any kind of physical world, this would be a deception, and then that would make God a deceiver. Descartes rejects this and does not accept that God is a deceiver, which then only leads to one place the existence of a material world, that the physical world exists 
and so does the corporal body. Well, we've finally come back. Well, not exactly. Although Descartes now believes again in the physical world, he does not think the world we perceive through the senses is exactly how it is. Descartes explains that perception by the senses is very obscure and confused in many ways. So although the physical world exists, our senses may not give us a true perception of it. I see, this would be similar to the indirect realist mode of thought in philosophy of knowledge. Exactly. One philosopher in particular who has expanded this line of thought was John Locke with his primary and secondary quality distinction. Yes. So then Descartes now agrees that the existence of a physical world is highly likely and so too with the corporal body. So the final remaining question is the relation between mind and body. Interesting. So Descartes explains, on the one hand, I have a clear and distinct idea of myself insofar as I am a thinking unextended thing. On the other hand, I have a distinct idea of the body insofar as it is only an extended thing, but which does not think. It is certain that I, that is to say my mind, by which I am what I am, is entirely and truly distinct from my body and may exist without it. Now, what Descartes is saying here is that mind and body are in fact separate. And not only this, they are in fact completely different things. A physical substance is not capable of thought. It is, however, an entity that possesses extension. It has length, breadth, depth and height, and it can be divided. You can break down a physical thing into smaller parts. The mind, however, is not extended. It is not spatially located and it is indivisible. The essence of the mental is thought. So for Descartes, it was clear. Mind and body are not alike in any way. They are in fact separate. I see. Descartes will also argue that we can in fact conceive of ourselves as existing without our body, further showing the separation between mind and body and that our true selves, the I, is that of our minds. So if the mind and body are separate, how do the two connect? Are we to suppose that the mind is therefore inside the body controlling it like a driver steering a car? No, actually, Descartes says it's a lot more complicated than that. Descartes describes it as intermingling, whereby the mind and body intermingle to become one entity. The two effectively fuse together, mix into each other to create the thinking physical organism that we are. Hmm, this seems very problematic. How can we say that two things that are not only separate, but as Descartes said, completely different, are able to intermingle in this way? This seems like quite a leap with no real justification on how we got there. I cannot really accept that conclusion. Really? Yes. I cannot see how an unextended non-physical mind can intermingle with an extended physical body. This really doesn't work for me. Yes, you're expressing doubt in this argument, but this is not a solid objection against Descartes' point. Okay, well I think the biggest flaw is that in order for the sixth meditation to stand, Descartes relies on God not being a deceiver. His acceptance of the material world is that if it does not exist and everything is an illusion, this would constitute mass deception and would be against God's nature. Correct. But why must this be the case? Firstly, we know we experience certain errors and deceptions in our senses, so we know God has the ability to either cause or allow this. And secondly, this was raised by Thomas Hobbes, it is generally thought that doctors aren't at fault if they deceive their patients for their health's sake, and that fathers aren't at fault if they deceive their children for their own good. So God may still be good, but deceive us at the same time. Well, Descartes has not said that we can never be deceived, as clearly we can, and we are, but rather it would be against the nature of God if he intends to deceive us for the sole sake of deception. This would go against the good God, and so if this goes against the nature of God, it seems unlikely we would be totally and completely deceived at all times, therefore making it more likely 
that the material world exists. Okay, but where does this leave an atheist? For Descartes, the existence of the material world is solely dependent on the existence of God. How can one who does not believe in God use this argument? Hmm, good point. Well, I guess we just need to leave it here. That's all for Descartes' meditations on first philosophy. We've covered all six meditations and what an interesting, thought-provoking journey it has been. Thank you all for watching. We hope you enjoyed the vibe. Please like, share and subscribe and we look forward to seeing you all soon. Bye bye.